Hello everyone out there in internet land. My name is Matthew and welcome to my very first video. Now all my life I have been obsessed with video games, movies, comic books, and all things nerdy. So I figured I'd try my hand out this video blog thing. Now my very first video blog shall be a list. Yes, my list of my top 10 video games of 2014. Now unfortunately I am, do not work for IGN or any other video game website or magazine. So I do not have the time or money to play every video game out there. So great great games like Dragon Age Inquisition or Bayonetta 2 will not be included on this list. Now without further inter inter interruption, I will start. Number 10, Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U. Yes, Mario Kart, everyone's favorite game that has destroyed so many friendships over the course of the decade, two decades, whenever the first one came out. Yes, all thanks to that wonderful blue shell. Now, normally you wouldn't catch me playing a racing game at all. I don't like games like Gran Turismo, Need for Speed. But when you add turtle shells, blue shells, banana peels, and all sorts of maniac things that the Mario Kart series is known for, I enjoy that just fine, especially with some friends. Now, number nine, also for Nintendo system systems, the Wii U and the 3DS, Shovel Knight. Yes, Shovel Knight, the old school throwback that's part Mega Man, part DuckTales. It's a blast, and a great retro blast. Number eight, Sunset Overdrive for the Xbox One. Yes, that zany, over-the-top game. Kind of like a Doritos Mountain Dew version of a post-apocalyptic future with zombies. And throw in some Jet Grind Radio just to mix it up. Number seven, Towerfall for the PS4. I guess it was also for the UI, but who has an UI, really? I have anyone does? Anyone in the world? Anyone? Does even the people who made the UI have an UI? No, I don't think so. Now, Towerfall is one of the surprise games of 2014 for me personally. I did not heard, had not heard about it at all. I, then it got some good reviews on some websites and whatever, just one of the many indie games out there that the websites love to praise. But then my friends uh, got the game for free, because it was, I believe, a free game for PS4 one month, and I played it with him. And my lord, it is such a great, great party game. I mean, it's very, very simple, very simple, but it, like games like, um, oh... I can't think of any off the top of my head, but simple equals fun in this one. So yes, if you can get four pe four people playing with four con PS4 controllers, it is a blast to right up there with any of the Nintendo Party games out there. Number six, Evil Within. Yes, Evil Within. I've always been a huge fan of the Resident Evil series until the last couple. Resident Evil 5 was not bad bad, but definitely not up there with the other, the great ones in the series. And then 6, I didn't even finish 6, so that was, uh, but this is a return to the greats of the horror genre, the survival horror genre. I reckon to anyone that loves the old school Resident Evil, Silent Hills, any of those kind of games, but I will warn you, it is tough, brutally tough. Number 5, Destiny. Yes, Destiny. Now, I've always been a huge fan of the Halo series. In fact, I would consider Halo 1 to probably be my favorite game of all time. But when I heard about this game and its focus on co-op and the like, I thought, eh, it might not be for me because I usually don't get to... I can usually get, get together with some friends maybe in the same room, but online it's usually harder. And, and like, say, Borderlands. Borderlands... I had a blast playing a multiplayer, but single player, nah. And then when I uh, Destiny first came out, I didn't have a PS4, and I didn't only had an Xbox One. And, I was, uh, and everyone I knew was getting for PS4, so there was no way I was going to even play with anybody. So I decided to skip it. But then I did to get a PS4 earlier this year, right around Christmas time, and it came with Destiny, and I played it. And I loved it. I guess I should never have doubted Bungie. Number four. 
Well, I will reiterate on Destiny, though, it's still not quite up to the Halo levels of quality. It is still a fun time to be had. Number four, South Park, the Stick of Truth. Yes, South Park. I've always been a huge fan of the cartoon, one of the funniest shows on TV, and has been for over a decade. But I've also never been a really big fan of the turn-based RPG genre. It's kind of bored me. I mean, back in the day, I did like Final Fantasy 3 slash 6 and 7, but after that, it kind of fell off the map for me. So, when I saw South Park with its turn-based RPG, I gave it, I, I skipped over for quite a while. Then finally got cheap enough at Best Buy and I decided, eh, I'll give it a try. And it did start off kind of slow, but I'm glad I stuck with it because it is a really funny game and it's been really addictive and I might even start liking turn-based RPGs again because of it. Number three, Titanfall. Xbox One, 360 PC. I think I've been forgetting to mention the systems anyways for most of the games on this list. Anyways, Titanfall is a kind of a weird game. And that the entire game industry was in love with it pre-coming out. Everyone was like, oh, this is going to be the next game. This is going to be the next Halo, the next Call of Duty. This is going to be the next game that you just have to have. Everyone's going to be obsessed over. This is the reason to buy an Xbox One, even though it's on the 360, almost nearly identically. But this is the reason to buy an Xbox One. You just need to buy it. It's amazing. Oh, my God. And then it comes out. 8.0. Good game, not that great, you know, whatever. And then everyone forgets about it two months later. Which I think is unfair. Outside of not having a single player, which adding a single player would have added to, maybe not the replayability of it, but added to building a world for such a new game like that. But outside of that, I love the multiplayer. I love love the game. It's just so much fun to get in those giant titans and blasting away little people on the ground and even when you're on the ground and it's you never feel like the people in the titans have an unfair advantage of people on the ground that don't have a titan yet you always feel like it's you have a fair uh you're, it's a fair game now i now number two super smash brothers yes super smash brothers one of my all-time favorite games has always my favorite game on almost every Nintendo console. The regular, the regular Wii, the GameCube, not the 64, because well, Zelda and Goldeneye were on that. Zelda or can have time and Goldeneye, but yes, yeah, Smash Brothers. Now there hasn't been a lot done to this one as far as adding new things, uh, but. And they take away a lot from uh, the single player, in my opinion, from the last one, because the last one had a great single player, the, what is it called, the Sub-Missionary, mis Sub-Mission, whatever it was called. That was a great single player game. And then, you know, this, the multiplayer is probably the best, one of the most, if not the most fun multiplayer ever. Now this one, the single player, I just, they don't really have any great single player story mode or anything, so... I mean, you can always go for all the challenges and everything, but that stuff doesn't usually interest me that well. I've never been big into collecting everything in a video game or whatever. I just want to have fun. So that part's kind of disappointing, but what the that's not disappointing is what that they did add to the Wii U and the 3DS version. The 3DS version adding the fact that it's a 3DS one. The very first Smash Bros. being on the 3DS, being on a portable system, so I'm able to play the game you know, on the go, on breaks at work, so that's great. And then the Wii U one added eight-player Smash, which that's just an insanity. Barely can even keep up with your character, but still a blast. And finally, drumroll please, Hearthstone. Yes, Hearthstone, yeah. Now, I know that might kind of uh, turn off some of the people that are more into, you know, traditional games like a you know, first-person shooters or RPGs, whatever. But I've always been a huge fan. Well, I would say always, but back in the, my younger teenage years, I was a huge fan of Magic the Gathering. Huge. I was obsessed. I had hundreds, thousands of cards. And I that's how I spent most of my uh, teenage years, playing that game, obsessing over that game. Now, as time went on, I kind of lost track with it thanks to other things getting in the way and just how expensive and time-consuming it is to keep up with it. But Hearthstone definitely brought back my love of the 
card game genre and all on my iPad, which is what I'm actually recording this video with right now. Yes, I've spent probably 20, 30 hours on the game and I have, and I've not even given it one dime, which that's great on its own. Now, that will be it. I plan on doing other videos in the near future for my favorite movies, maybe my favorite TV shows and comic books, and then one for my upcoming, the upcoming movies and video games of the year. Now, hopefully you all enjoyed it, and we'll tune in for the next one. That's me, Matthew, signing off.